Howdy y'all, this is Nick back with the Chevy van. Last video, I obviously was having exhaust problems. <laughs> I wasn't happy that I had to remove the exhaust to begin with, but anyway, I dropped the hangers and then I realized, well, what's going on here is that instead of just running the pipe straight back like any normal person, they decided to give it a 90 degree bend which then interferes with the gas tank. I got a big fat gas tank, you know, 36 gallon gas tank in there. And now it just, every time you try to pull it off of the axle, you know, pull it forward, it, it contacts the gas tank and it won't come out and gas tank's obviously blocking it. So now of course, what I gotta do is I gotta drop the gas tank. I gotta drain the gas, drop the gas tank and pull the exhaust out and then it should be ready to go for a transmission removal so i'm gonna get jacking it up some blocks to block that. Actually, it's rolling backwards. Okay. That's what I figured. So where do you, are you going to, um... Yeah. Jack it up, drain the tank, and then drop the tank. What are you going to do? What are you going to use to support? You might have to take the fuel cap off. It might be better to leave the fuel cap on, allow some suction to slow it down. Or, because I don't know, you mm -hmm. know, don't know how fast it's going to stream out there and if it's going to spill it. So, I'll crack it first and then. I would. If no, it's slow, uh, no, no, if you no, take no. the gas cap off, or right. no, I'd leave it on. But if it's real slow and it's. If it's slow enough where you can open up the gas cap and it won't spray over the container, you don't miss the container, then leave it off because then it'll flow quicker. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I know. You know, huh? no. I am.
of that comes out slow, right? Yeah. So it shouldn't really make not make a difference. I'll take the cap off. Maybe it will. Ready? Yep. Yeah, it made a difference. It, yeah, it's a lot. It's flowing a lot. Yeah. All right. So I'll be back when this is fully drained. See you all in a bit. Yeah. All right, tanks coming out. So yeah, a little piece of shit ground wire that wouldn't come off just snapped right off. Well, it doesn't it does it doesn't have it doesn't even have like a connector. I don't know how yeah. we got that out last time. It, we probably took it upstream. Some stupid GM bullshit. There's probably a stupid one. I know it's a custom tank, but well, it's, there's probably a connector up there up in the line. 
Anyway, you want to make that, a, you want to probably want to correct that so that you don't <clears throat> have that problem again. Yeah, there's more fucking crazy shit I gotta do. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't have come off without breaking it. not moving back at all. Let me try pulling it back a bit. It's getting uh, bound up on the ground. Alright. Now what? Oh, oh yeah. There's a hanger there that's getting caught. Alright, let me see. Yeah, to twist it to the side a bit. Can that hanger come off? These bolts here are really rusty, I don't know. Because it's not really. Alright, there's that's as much as I can twist it. Okay. Yeah, that hanger's gonna have to come off. Okay. Common man hanger. Not like the Mopar hangers we learned shit. about last night. No, this probably wouldn't. This would be California. Shut up. Fucking building such a dumbass in Austin. Nicholas, that's the way all these aftermarket hangers are. This is actually, well, this part was built in Corpus Christi. That part was built in California. Well, Wherever this van was built. You had some exhaust work done? Corpus yeah, this, sil this silver stuff? Yeah. It had to be redone to pass inspection to get it registered there. Uh -huh. They found holes in it. Come out now. Hopefully. What else is it hooking on? There's another dumbass hanger in the way here. Give me a sec. Wow. Yeah, there's three and I didn't think. Slide up now. You think? You think? Yeah, I, I don't see this coming off, but I still see it hitting the, the leaf spring. 
You got to support the frame and let the let the axle hang. And that's what I was thinking all along. There's not enough clearance. You don't need to convince me. I know. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Good morning. Let's let's start at seven instead of eleven. Well, you know me, I can't get up. Well, get your ass I up, you. Wait a minute. 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 You got up at five thirty the other day to go get a window. You can do it. Oh, yeah. Actually, it was five o'clock yeah. that we left. We you left at five. Wake me up. You had to wake me up. Oh. Just well then. Up at five thirty at my office. <laughs> and you can shut the camera off. It's not stupid. Life is a hell of a lot worse working in the middle of the day on this shit. No. You shut the fuck up and get your ass out of bed. Started. Well, you gotta try to swing it. It's not going any further. Okay. Can you swing it? Swing it? Wait, can I can I see over there? That end? Yeah. Let me see. Shit for this fucking stupid exhaust not putting this piece of shit back in. <laughs> I'll run this thing open header. It's not fair. I have to listen to open header asshole going up the street every day. Look at this stupid catastrophe, complicated. This is what overthinking of an exhaust system is. You got that shit going across the transmission pan. Then they did all this bendy zigzag shit over here. It's fucking ridiculous. But there we go. We got the exhaust out. Now I got to get all my energy back so then we can pull a trans, drop a transmission. And how we did it? Well, basically, no jacks on the axle. You basically had to turn the floor jack into a bumper jack and jack it up from the bumper to get clearance between the axle and the frame and the body to get this last little bent piece of shit pipe off the axle. So there we go. I don't know, I do not like this exhaust system at all. And yeah, this ground wire, of course, what dumbasses did is they soldered the wrong end to the fuel sender unit to the tank. And then they ran it through a frame rail support, whatever, hole in there. And then they bolted it on the other side of the frame. It's stupid because you got to remember that unique little detail or you have a busted ground wire. But, well, you should have a busted ground wire anyway, because that thing should be yeah, that's all something rusty that pulls anyway. off. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to reverse it, or we're just you know going to keep both ends so you can disconnect them. And we're going to make sure we can disconnect at that end next time, because so, that thing is stupid as hell. This thing looks like it's soldered on there. Uh, yeah, that's what they, they did. So... The hell would happen if you don't have a ground wire there? Well, let's see. 
probably nothing. And the Fury doesn't have a ground wire. It just has the just has the gauge wire pops right on the sender unit. Well, these things, the return path for the uh, fuel sender would be through these, and these are all rusty. So that's why they put a ground on it because it's you need accurate ground for the fuel sender to read right. And that's probably not going to work, but yeah, um, fixing that's going to take a little bit of thought because we have to wire um, some kind of spade the other side of the spade connector. Mm -hmm. We'll have to get a right. We'll have to get a, a spade connector set. Solder one side on there and the other. Uh, mm -hmm. terminate, it at, terminate the wire so that you can do what you expected to do just like this one. You, know, you pop that one off real easy and then it's just struggling with that one because you can't see. And you don't know what the dumbasses did because no, nobody who's intelligent would have done that. I don't know. <laughs> That's fucking stupid. It's crazy yeah, how I mean, three know, years ago... Good. We remembered to dis how to disconnect that. Well, now I completely forgot. It was just to drop the tank and let it break. Mm -hmm. That's just what we did. All right. So I'll be back in a moment, dropping this uh, transmission. Nick found a new pet. Come on. Gecko. Let's focus. Right. It's, it's out of focus. Of course. All right, well. I got Not that. my pocket, your <laughs> pocket. Not in your pocket. You put him in your pocket. He doesn't like that. Well, you're you're scratching underneath his chin. He liked that. He's stuck in there. <laughs> you gonna get him out? Don't grab him by the tail. All right, hold him like you were, and and do ding dong. Where'd he go? Oh, okay. There he okay. is. He's in shock. Is he? Got him. There. There he is. Get you a little trip. Don't kill him. Now, now scratch his chin like you were before he likes that. Doesn't he? Uh. <laughs> he's not happy. You can see he's not happy. He's pissed. All right, we'll let you go. All right. All right. What else do you have over here? Nothing else. He actually was on my neck, and I didn't know what it was, and then he dropped down, hmm. and he went in there, and then I moved this brick, and then I was able to pick him up again. How did he end up on your neck? Oh. All right. I don't know. So we're gonna go run and do something that I gotta show y'all how I got this set up. So of course, you know, if you try just putting jack stands on the frame rails and they get in the way of the transmission. So we just stuck some a brick and some wood under each tire and that gives us enough clearance. Now, of course, you know, when you take the transmission out, 
the motor is going to want to slope back. So I just threw some bricks in there with a jack stand and a piece of wood on top of that. And that's under the oil pan. And that will support the motor when it comes backward when we pull the transmission. But we're not going to pull the transmission just yet. But we got everything ready to go so that this transmission can come out today. And at least I'll get one goal accomplished today. <laughs> you know, because then just next thing is bell housing bolts, a cross member, and then should come out. No problem. Ah, so I'll see you all in a bit. Get rid of the no problem. Yeah, of course. Boomer interruption. Just one more thing. This is definitely not staying like this overnight. Because we're going to have a special Karen. Uh, bring some special dudes over to give us a visit and tell us that we need to get our shit together in 10 days or we're going to get fined $2,000 a day after that. So, yeah. So some of y'all OGs probably remember that, but yeah. The detail is 45 days. I gave 45. 45 days, then we get the 10 day warning. But they can put it at any time. Yeah. yeah. And if they want to. I don't trust those bitches. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'll I'll be back. Mission is now officially free from the motor, and I'm gonna show y'all one thing I missed. I thought I had everything, but of course, you know, there's always that one thing that gets away. It's this right here. This is called the detent cable and it runs over right to where the uh, cooler lines are and you can't actually take that thing out of the transmission because however it's connected it's connected inside the transmission which means you'd have to drop the pan do all kinds of crazy shit so obviously that is nowhere near fucking convenient when you just want to drop the transmission from the motor so you basically have to disconnect at the car now lucky me I get a van from California with bullshit California emissions so there's all this shit like this fucking shit piled on top of the cable I need to get to so I had to have super long pliers just to get the thing unhooked from the carburetor luckily there's no bullshit clip it just hooks on there there's a little hole that it pops into and then it slides down and locks and what I had to do is since you know the uh, throttle it only goes down that way I have to basically pull the cable the detent cable forward to a point where I can then pop it off and yeah that's a real bitch and then on top of it you know of course some transmissions don't have this shit, but this big fucking thing right here with a clip, it's clipped into a bracket piled underneath this shit. You can't even see it. You know, shit like this. Um, I had to get another set of pliers that open really wide like this, stick it down in there, and, and at the same time, I'm operating, one hand's operating, the pliers, on the other hand, is pulling the damn thing out. And I got it out without destroying it. So, we're good to go. Now it's just a matter of getting the jack under the transmission pan. Getting all the bell housing bolts out. And then uh, disconnecting the cross member. And this transmission should be coming down. It is one thing extra that you can do is if you don't want transmission fluid leaking out the ass end of the transmission then it helps to uh, drain you know take the pan off and drain whatever transmission fluids in the pan and I tried doing it didn't crack well real well but I got most of it most of the transmission fluid out of the pan and then you just shove a rag in the back and that should keep it from making a mess but it's already made a big fucking mess. 
I don't know. I still can't believe this van. I don't know if this is a, a Chevy thing, but I mean, all underneath this uh, 350 small block LS9 and the friggin' transmission itself, it's just greasy, nasty, wet. It's just, it's awful. I, I can go look under my 66 Fury and it, it's not, it's dry. But this thing is just all underneath of it is just coated real nasty. So, I don't know, one day I'm going to be pulling this motor out, getting some fucking headers, and pulling all this emissions shit off of this. Because apparently, this emissions shit goes with the uh, manifolds. <laughs> So you basically have to replace the manifolds if you want to delete all this emissions crap. You know, and I'm I'm in Texas and then on you know on top of that, I don't even think I don't know if this thing even if this thing was back in California, I don't know if they even, you know, smog shit this old. Maybe they still do. But I know here in Texas, you know, the limit is about 24 years. And then the car no longer is required for emissions testing. And they just do safety inspection and then they're done with it. And eventually I can see Texas in the near future dropping safety inspections. They've talked about it before. That's kind of pointless. You know, other states operate completely fine without safety inspections. It's just easier to go. It just makes it easier to go just directly to the tax office and pick up your registration instead of fucking around with trying to get an inspection. And then you got the inspection report and then you got to go run over to the tax office and get your registration. Yeah, that's a mess. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, I'm going to get, um, getting these, uh, bell housing bolts out. They're, they're 9 sixteenths. Uh, the other thing, this dipstick tube, it's still in here because some more dumb emission shit. This fucking thing right here has a bracket that's literally just wrapped itself around this um, dipstick tube. And it doesn't want to come out. I got it out before. I don't remember how, but it just seems like a bitch right now. So it's better to just leave it in place and drop the transmission and it should pop out of the transmission this shouldn't be shouldn't be a big deal you know yeah so yep so there's I counted about one two three four five six bell housing bolts that's that's what I counted there's also um, another bell housing bolt is holding a bracket in for this wire here so tube whatever thing but uh, once I um, pull that bolt, that should all loosen up, come out. So yeah, see y'all in a bit. Alright, so here we go. First thing is the transmission cross member. And then the bell housing bolts. So, the main... Um, cross member to frame bolts are three quarters three quarter it's a bolt it's a three quarter nut and a three quarter head and then the bolts that go into the transmission that are directly under the transmission the cross member are I think I forgot what they were but they're, they're smaller Get the thing uh, supported right here, three and a half ton floor jack. So these inner bolts right here are five eighths. I'm using my impact because these are pretty big, fat bolts that aren't in the best condition. And I got my impact set to reverse. Ah! 
tell you that. It came right out. No problem. So obviously this transmission has been out before because they got some mixed mismatch washers, but yeah, there we go. We got those main cross member bolts done. Definitely some weird missing hardware. So you're you're pounding stuff out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You want to make sure that you have the weight off of this, right? So then. Okay. You know it's looser, right? Yeah. So it's gonna drop, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's one side. Is that transmission moving up anymore? I see. Go up? Or am I crushing the, the pan? It's going up a bit. Alright, so all the weights off the, the cross bar? Okay. Yeah, it's pretty loose over all here. Alright, you got it then. You just gotta get the... You get that? Yeah. What's going on? You got the bolt out and it's not falling out? No, not in this side. Why not? What else is holding it in? I don't know. Alright, I don't see anything. Alright, so now uh, this has got to come out, and yep. what I'm expecting is the cross member to drop. Are there, are there any other bolts? Now, let's see. Anything? That right, wants so, to drop loose. Right, so make sure you Can you grab that bolt for me? stuck in there, go out that way. Cross members out. Alright, here we go. So cross members out. Now it's just bell housing bolts and then lowering it out.
loosening up the last bolt here. Damn, the last one has to be that tight. Huh? What the hell happened? I don't know. Maybe raise it up a bit. Why is it so freaking the last one? Yeah. You may need to get your can't Impact. believe that. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah, are you are you turning it the right way? Yeah, it's it's off. I have to get the impact. Bolt is out. What the hell? What's wrong? Nothing. That was just the fact that that last bolt would be such a bitch. Well, you know, you probably ought to go around and loosen them first. All right. Well, that's all the bolts I counted and I see. So all right. I gotta hold on. Drop it upstairs. What are you doing? Putting them with the rest of the bolts up here. Oh. <laughs> you could. You, all right. You're going right. to have to get back down here, right? Yeah, I'm getting back down. How ready are you to, to stabilize that tail? Be careful. Little by little. There's a seal back there, so be gentle, right? Yeah. Channel. <laughs> you, you're gonna stab right into it. Oh, okay. Careful. Right. You getting it? Yeah. You got it tucked Listen. in there. Seems pretty good. I'm ready. It looks like it's the torque converter is off the flex plate. Yeah, I felt it move forward. The engine is sitting on the support, and there's some pins. It still has to come back some. Okay. Can, can you... Uh, uh, this hold on, hold on, rubber huh? crap is sliding off of this. Uh, it's like really not aligned. Oh, that sucks. But we're committed now, right? I think. Yeah. coming down but I don't see the engine the transmission coming with it gently okay what do you see I see that I feel the transmission dropping all right well, we have some pins right here and of course this thing right in the way of the line I'm where you can see and this is not there yet That jack is moving, there's not much weight on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, so, you got it? I, I, I'm 
Please don't move. I'm not moving. Don't move. Alright, so what you're going to have to do yeah. is <laughs> stop the jack from moving. Okay. Stop. Oh. And you put something in front of the jack. I don't have anything on an impact gun. Oh. Well, the jack is moving and the transmission is falling. So we have. What? Oh, shit. I want to put my head above it. Alright, well, forget it. <laughs> there. <laughs> This is how you remove a transmission, Margo style. <laughs> so, I was going to roll it out. Do you want to drag it out or do you want to roll it out? I'll drag it out. Alright. Alright, King Kong. There we go. I don't know if I want to do that again. <laughs> you barely lift that thing, even. Okay, you can lift it a little higher than me. All right, let's see. That's because I'm freaking tired. Oh. That's a, it would be great if I could lift it straight up and walk it in here. <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't get the right, weight so specs on it. Your, your turn. Just get over it like I did. Turn around. This way? Yeah. And then, like, put your other foot over it, right? I don't know. Did I put my other foot over it? I don't know. Anyway. What can you do? Goldie! <laughs> I knew you could lift it higher than me. <laughs> it's just full of transmission fluid, that's why. Good, good Try going. It. Your mess. Look at the mess. The kid. Thinks. <laughs> Thinks of what could happen, doesn't he? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> why don't we get a. When we get a pool of this stuff in the backyard, you can just dive in. Fuck no. Why not? You like it too much. That no, it's gonna piss all over me. Yeah, you didn't know because you didn't think what could happen. So I didn't. It's one of the reasons I didn't lift it that high. I didn't want to find out what. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta be right back after hosing myself off because it's awful. Okay, you had to make a mess. Tranny. Oh, dry up. <sighs> Look at you, though. Man, you are one <laughs> strong man. Yeah. Now, what I gotta find out, which I've been wanting to find out about this van, is if this is a matching, if this is numbers matching transmission and motor. All right, so how heavy is this? Yeah. <clears throat> Any idea? I, I don't know. <laughs> Want to find out? Yeah, I'll, I'll look it up here in a minute. Yeah, hold on. Shut the camera off. Hold on. Leave it running. Still got an hour on these it's SD cards. These 64 gig SD cards are fucking awesome. Right. First, we have to calibrate the scale. Oh, you're going to set that thing on a scale? You're a freaking crazy right. boomer. I'm curious. But I mean, no matter what you do, transmission fluid will just get everywhere because it's literally designed to make a fucking mess. Uh, yeah. They, yeah. they have to have special tables when they tear down transmissions that have all the, the fluid think, go into... I think I can lift it that much. 
I don't want to lift it that you know on me. But I'm trying to avoid all this stuff too. He's hey, bare, he's barefoot. I get an shit. idea. Why don't you take one of your hands, put it there, and I'll take two of my hands and put it here. Okay. Ready? My hands L too slippy, slippery. Are you kidding? Yeah, for all this transmission here. fluid. All right. There. Can you do it? I got some grip now. You got See. it? Yeah. All right, lift. <clears throat> You're gonna break the scale. <laughs> it says it's 175. <laughs> I did 75. I was, kind of, I was thinking 200. Yeah, 178. Okay, now you can clean up your mess. I got the hose off first. I'm sick of spongy uh, shoe equipped with tranny fluid. Okay. Freaking thing. Alright, so I'll see y'all in a bit when I know where these numbers are at and I'll show y'all if this truly is, if something happened between 78 and 94. We'll, we'll see if anything happened between then kind of doubt that but who knows more converters coming out I guess it just slides out it should just pull slide out probably want to get it at an angle let's see easy 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 bull gentle careful there you go I'm suspecting that that seal. Yeah, that's all right. I, I mean, it's leaking right now, right from there. Yeah. But it yeah. might be, you know, that might be normal, but I'm, you can see, you know, it's been leaking. I think that this seal is what's, I'm guessing, is bad. That right there, that orange ring. Yeah, it just starts dripping right. Down from there, I, mean, have it... I don't know. I mean, it just sits there, right? We, we we pull the car, we pull the van in, shut it off, and then it just leaks. And it looks pretty wet up around here. Yeah, you can see that it's just it's soaked at the bottom. Maybe it's behind those bolts. I think there's a like a second seal behind that plate. I'm wondering if it's, but it usually it would be this. I don't know. In on the inside, well, this looks like engine oil. In there. So, what I would suggest we do is take this replace the gasket behind here and that seal mm -hmm. and then put it back in unless yeah unless you take it off and you find shredded gears and shit in there cause uh I don't know. I don't know how. <clears throat> I've never rebuilt a transmission before. So to me, it's like just trying to seal the leak. And just, you know, not that we had to. But seal it. Replace the seal. <laughs> yeah. Replace the gaskets. The put it back together. <laughs> well, JB weld it. <laughs> and put it back in. Just a quick repair. Yeah, I was thinking, I mean, like how much? It's probably mostly just this seal. 
training shop charged for me just to drop it off over there and they gut it and re rebuild it and I get it back and put it in. Hmm. How much do you think they charge? 500 bucks. And then at least it'd be built, right? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll make sure we get a damn good transmission shop, not some fucking hack job of a shop. Or we could just unbolt it, change the gasket, change the seal, put it back in for a lot less. Okay, well, because we'll, we want, do we'll we want to sell it or what? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, Do we I mean, you want to sell it. Right? I mean, we're not really using it. And then they'll probably say, well, you know, you're going to need a new torque converter, too. It's been in there forever. Then what? All right. Well, we'll, we'll just work on the seal like we agreed on. Yeah. right now I found the VIN plate it's right here partial VIN plate it reads if I can zoom in here so it says CAU199162 and if we go up here to my VIN plate right here it says 8U1, 8U199162. So we got a numbers matching tranny. Now I gotta confirm if the motor is numbers matching. And that's usually somewhere up near the head or something, but I'll get up there in a moment and see. But at least I got the transmission identified. So Apparently, I mean, here's an example of the location on a 1978 GM Turbo Hydromatic 350 transmission. The tag is going to be right there on the passenger side, just behind the bell housing. And I still haven't figured out exactly what model this is because they had their RPO codes of stuff so I'm not exactly sure but I'll I'll look and see what the RPO code is but yeah I'll, I'll be back with the uh, motor identification all right And see what you don't want. See, this thing can become a wick and then just start siphoning yeah. down. So we want this stuff up so it doesn't siphon out. So we're good. We're, we're pretty stable. Yeah, so. Yeah. We're not even being supported by these. So this one's not doing anything. So this is all pretty good. Well, that one's. Yeah, I think we're all good. How about this one? Yeah, I like this tight already. Okay. Yeah, see what you can't, doing. It can't fall forward. No. I think.
Oh, we're gonna roll her in. Next time, probably gonna be taking this thing back out and spraying it down the friggin' degreaser, making it a lot cleaner. The whole thing's a mess. <laughs> and then working on that seal. <laughs> All right, so here I am wrapping up the video the next day. I was busy and it got dark fast yesterday, so I couldn't wrap up the video, but here it is. I'm happy I got my transmission out and that I was able to confirm that its numbers matching. The motor is a different story. I thought that the VIN was on the the rear of the block, but it's actually on the front of the block on the passenger side. So that's going to be another day when I confirm whether that motor is the numbers matching motor in my van. But anyway, so I went ahead looked into this uh, ATF leak, transmission fluid leak, and obviously it looks to be coming from the front pump seal or you know there's a couple of different terms for it so this seal right here you know it's just like you know it's almost like any regular axle seal it's got a lip here and you can pop it off and put a new one on there but obviously when i first pulled out this transmission and we took the torque converter off it was leaking straight from here and so the great assumption was that, okay, there's our problem right there. It's that seal. Well, this whole thing here, this whole assembly is the oil pump. And there's actually a second seal um, behind here. It, it basically, it seals the oil pump to the uh, case. And it's a big O-ring seal. And then there's a gasket there. Well, apparently they sell them in kits, so I just ordered mine off of Amazon, and it should be coming here either this week or next week. But I'll definitely be doing a, a video pulling this oil pump and changing these seals. And hope, you know, basically at this point, we're just going to go the route of changing the seals and just hopefully, you know, the thing holds ATF when we put it back in and we'll be good to go. You know, we're not going to go into a major rebuild because obviously, you know, before this thing was even leaking, the transmission really had no known issues to it. It shifted fine. It wasn't, you know, having any crazy issues. Another fuckhead. Yeah. So anyway, so I got the seals on order. And I'm going to be doing that in the next video here. And then, of course, you know, yeah. So I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.